The Spanish announce table. Tom, another busy, busy, busy week of wrestling and lives. We have lives to any of you listeners out there that aren't accustomed to this show. Uh, we, the hosts, Tim and Tom here, we do have lives. It is a pro wrestling podcast. But we are not pro wrestlers. We're just enthusiasts. But Tom, uh, I know you had a really busy, uh, busy stuff. So we're going to save you for last, right? Because you had so much, you were like giddy and excited. Uh, we'll talk so about what much. I did. We'll talk about what I did, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so first off, let's get a. Uh, as we listened last week to mm-hmm. the podcast, uh, you went bowling, mm-hmm. and apparently that is continuing. So we might get a trend here. So let's get the Rainer bowling update. Yeah. Part two. Part two. Well, this is part three now, I think. Part four? Oh, three. okay. I think it's three. Three weekends All in right. a row now, I think. And um, I think I've regressed. I think I suck more. I think I suck more. That'll happen. Well, Sometimes you plateau, and then you'll overthink yeah. it, and then you go and dip down. Well, so the first time we did it, we had friend of the family, right? Yeah, friends you've met before, um, and mm-hmm. they came mm-hmm. and bowled. And then we were like, we should bowl every weekend. Every Sunday, because this place nearby has got a great deal. And we were like, yeah, let's do it. Why not? We're not doing anything else on a Sunday. Let's do it. And we were like, all right, so next time we'll go just us. And then the next time we'll invite somebody. And then the next time we'll go. And then the next time we'll see if somebody wants to go. And then that kind of thing, right? And so this time somebody came, right? Another friend of the family. Friend of hers that turned into friend mm-hmm. of the families, right? right? And then um, so bowl less good, right, when you're in that kind of mood, right? We haven't seen this person in months, right, at best. And we used to see mm-hmm. them every day. And then so you don't bowl really well. So I think I got a 120-something, I think, in this in the games I played. Okay. So, uh, you know, you know, it's it's getting rough. It happens. It's getting rough. You got to keep – I got to keep but pressing you know on. What? We're going to keep doing it. You know what I mean? There you go. Yep, there We're you go. Keep doing it. Yeah. We're going to keep you gotta doing keep it. You got to keep working at it. Mm-hmm. Going to keep Good. on – What else bowl- were you up to? Keep on bowling and rolling, Tom. Bowling and rolling. Um – out of order that was sunday saturday uh long-term listeners of the spanish announce table will fully understand my glee tom as uh, we watch the kansas state university men's basketball team win a conference championship uh, at home on senior day so that was fun right and it was a class of seniors that had been starting since they were freshmen right all three of them so that was like a long term Mm -hmm. long play for for the long term fans of k-state and ku was not able to win the conference for the first time in 15 years go figure the long time rival right so but clarification question because i don't really follow so they won the conference championship Uh this week is and this is josephine also wanting to know Mm -hmm. this answer as well as you heard her tournament um Uh uh-huh so now you have the tournament. Yeah, so there's like a regular season championship, right? Well, hold the, on, hold on. Right. So I know that the champion – so this is championship week. So whoever right. wins the uh, week-long tournament gets an automatic bid Correct. into the NCAA tournament. Correct. Yeah. But if you're the conference champion for the entire season – and you lose the championship week, like like the lower, lesser known conferences, yeah, right. right? Like the WAC or right. whatever. Oh right? yeah, yeah. yeah Fuck Ohio off. Valley. Right, but if they win the conference championship, but then don't win the championship week, and right. you know the at large bids get taken right. up by Iowa and Ohio State right. or whatever. Right. So then why win the damn regular season? Oh, I know. Just yeah. literally, it's totally different. Coast yeah. For so so say the power conferences like your Big Twelves, your Big East, your AC, it's much bigger deal for them to win those regular season because it's a season long accomplishment, right? Like you beat all your chumps out, right? Like you beat them all in, in the round robin or whatever you play, right? And then but because, it doesn't necessarily because the top seven teams are going to get in the into the tournament no matter what anyway, right? So the tournament winner for the conference tournament usually is getting in already no matter what, right? It's just interesting know, how that works weird. between the two kind of different levels of basketball. Yeah, right? then it would just seem like just save it all for championship week. Well, well, because and so so for like K State, so they won. They've got the well, they tied right. They got a tie. They, they have a co-champions. They would have had a, if they had a tiebreaker. Then K State would have won the tiebreaker. That's why they've got the number one seed in this tournament, right? Well, I'm kind of like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't care about this tournament. Like, rest up for the NCAA tournament coming up, right? Everybody's like, oh, man, Dean Wade's hurt. He's not going to play. And I'm like, I don't get good, right? Like, don't but what play. if they don't get picked? Right. But what if they don't? Are oh, they, they will. There are, like, they, they could lose now like, and they'd sure. still be a four or five seed right now. 
Are you sure? Yeah, I mean, that's where everybody's got them at. It, it, so they dropped maybe to a six, right? You know what I mean? Like, they're yeah. in. They won their, you know what I mean? Their body of works mm-hmm. got them in. So that's that NCAA tournament's a little odd. But, yes, but for me, again, it's that long-term fan. Like, I've watched conference race after conference race, like, watched every game. So seeing the conference thing win, KU finally doesn't win it because they've been that whole, like, can't get over that hump thing so that was fun for us and then swim trunk back in soccer my son at broken arm still in a cast so we went to the first practice and i was like hey i don't know if he can be like a full participant or whatever and i was like it's coming off friday and he's just gonna be in a brace and i was like so that's up to you you know what i mean and he was like yeah all right and it was basically that coach was basically just like if he ain't hitting mud anybody with it and i mean they were first practice you know what i mean so they weren't really they were working on individual skills and body movement stuff. So, so over under mm-hmm. before we get into the season, two and a half games you get kicked out of. Mm. Over under, what are we doing? Yeah, because this is the indoor again. It gets mm-hmm. rough so in what there. are you doing? Uh-huh. I'm taking. Well, I'm taking the games. under. There's only eight games, I think. Right. Oh well, then game and a half over under. Well, under easy easy under. Easy. No, under. if it's a game and a half, I think you'll get kicked out of two. If, if the problem is, if I get kicked out of one early, then I've blown it, right? Because then I'm <laughs> right. blowing it, right? Yeah, it could be like I lost the spread, done, right? Like it's over, right? You won. But uh, if it, if it gets later in the season, uh, I I don't do like a back to back, right? Like some time has to pass before I'm like, nah, nah, fuck that guy, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Nope. You no, know, he's gonna hear me. So okay, I mean that's my life, right? That's the family man. Uh, you know, out here doing the bowling, the soccer, the 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 college athletes, right? Future accountants out there winning championships that nobody remembers, right? Mm-hmm. What about Tom mm-hmm. over there? Same thing. So, no. So <laughs> this weekend, uh, last minute, um, after a hard training session on Saturday morning, mm-hmm. decided to uh, change up all my plans, go to Wichita, which for those who are not familiar with the geographic regions of the Midwest. It's about a three hour drive from where I live uh, to watch my wrestling coach and fellow teammate Grant Dawson make make his UFC debut and dominate the fuck out of the guy. God, it was his pressure in round one exhausted me as I watched. Yeah. I said to Anthony uh, early in into the round after Grant got his third takedown, I said, I would quit right there. Like even right. yeah, on the stage, right. right? Like if you said, all you have to do is survive this round for five minutes, you get a million dollars. I know I'd like, I would have quit two and a half minutes in right there, right at this takedown. He was so relentless. It was incredible. Uh, second round was a little dicey. Third round was even more than the first round. Uh, so he won his uh, UFC debut. Got to also see in the main event uh, my he- favorite heavyweight of all time, Junior Dos Santos, uh, knock out Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis of the My Balls Are Hot fame, mm-hmm. if you remember that guy, mm-hmm. cutting that promo mm-hmm. uh, a few UFCs ago. Yeah. Uh, it was a very interesting, very uh, fascinating fight. Uh, Derek Lewis trying uh, to like bait him in with uh, acting as if he was hurt, but then try to knock him out. That didn't work. I, w- I wonder if you're, uh, right. you it was might, the whole thing. You might know this because you you know grappled and, and you know dabbled in the martial arts. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, are your balls hotter in a loss than in a victory? No, usually you're excited. You're like, woo! Mm, so, right, yeah. so all that adrenaline's pumping out the heat. Yeah. Right out the stroke, yeah, I'd say like right? A, de- just... a degree and a half. Right. Scientifically stating, probably a degree and a half hotter on a win than a loss. Well, then we don't fact check here, so I'm going to take that as scientific fact. Hashtag yeah, fact. there it is. Scientific, uh, not well, checked fact. You know, and we make a lot of, of, of you know, uh, we, we hit on that note a lot, right? That we don't fact check here on the Spanish announce table. And, mm-hmm. and I want to clue everybody in. It's because we don't need to. Yeah. Right, because I mean, they're right. We're yeah, right. We don't need to. We, right. You know, we know the facts. We've already they've been checked. We know these facts. Yeah, and if it's not right, it's an alternative fact, and it's how I feel. So deal right. with it. It's a hashtag true uh, fact. And the, yeah, it's a hashtag true fact. And then on Sunday, oh boy, I mm. messed up on almost every level you can. So Sunday, uh, Emily, my better half, mm-hmm. uh, she won uh, tickets 
to a sporting KC game, right? Yeah. Soccer. Woo. Right. Now, how did she win this? She put it into a drawing at Children's Mercy. Children's Mercy uh, owns the naming yep. rights mm-hmm. to the park that Sporting KC plays at. Yeah, she Liv said, here's my name. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lance Armstrong. Right. Uh, so here's my name putting in a, uh, a raffle. Hey, mm-hmm. my name got drawn. I won these two tickets, right? Raffle, raffle. So That's going cool. into That's it. Fun. It's, it's cool right. to win something like that because you never think you're going to. You're always like, yeah, exactly. whatever. Right. Going to get a yeah. telemarketing and so she, call yeah, soon. She, <laughs> She definitely won. So going into it, I assumed like, all right, um, we're probably going to sit next to coworkers that she doesn't know. So that awkward conversation of like, what department are you in? But I'm uh, Emily's uh, fiance. She works uh, with the social workers, blah, 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 all that stuff. Right. Uh, so nope, it was sweet tickets first off, which the suites at Sporting KC or, mm-hmm. or Children's Mercy Park out of this world. Right? Everything about that stadium is cool, first of all. Out of this world, awesome. Yeah. Then, on top of that, oh no, it's not just a Cassius. couple employees that um, she works with mm-hmm. that are in this suite. It's the damn CEO of Children's Mercy. And if you're not familiar with Children's Mercy, just Google it. It's a very, very well established hospital. Yeah, yeah very well established hospital. With world-renowned doctors, uh, and you know, oh, across people come the from country. states around, even even around the world, even to come to Children's Mercy here, right here in Kansas City for children's illnesses and stuff. Obviously, you know, yes. what I mean, not to make a let's boast about some bad things going. Right? You know no, what I mean? but, we have a yeah. The Children's Mercy is uh, known world around of how well they do with children's illnesses. It is a spectacular uh, institution, and so yes, yeah, the there's the CEO there, and Tom. Right. Yep. And then even better, even better uh, to put my foot in my mouth or I guess Ooh, dress in my mouth something? is no sporting KC oh, yeah. is uh, th- their colors are uh, dark blue and light blue. Right. Mm. Go sporting wear dark blue or light blue. Right. My dumb ass because I don't care about soccer. I wore a red hoodie. What? <laughs> You know the colors now, luckily, are blue. Like, what do you? You've I did. seen it. You know. Well, I didn't think. I didn't think. I didn't think. The other the team red wasn't red, red though, right? Like the other the team. The other team wasn't red. They were just yeah. black and yellow. They're from Philadelphia. That was yep. their color. Ha! Good. So at least I didn't do that. Um, but Emily goes. So as we walk into the suite, Emily goes like, "Oh, hey, that's the CEO." And they had a fantastic spread of food and all that. And I go, well, looks like I'm not eating or talking because I'm not going to fart or say anything stupid. So I was a mute for the entire game. I cheered a little bit when they but scored a goal. Fart. No, I oh, didn't because I didn't okay. put any type of food or drink in my body during the no nervous time. So I just sat no there. No nervous little peeps. No, because he was far enough away to where it didn't necessarily mean that like he was going to engage in conversation. Then I find find out they do a little internal newsletter at Children's Mercy and they talked about the game. Uh, I did not know because, again, I don't know Sporting KC. Um, also in that suite was the CEO of Sporting KC. <laughs> <laughs> is that all, huh? <laughs> yeah. There yeah, you are just, in red. Just two millionaires. <laughs> yeah. There you are in red, standing over there, clenching your ass cheeks together so you won't yep. fart. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. It was a fantastic time, though. You know, the, the game yeah. is fun. I want to sit well, – I don't know if every team has this, but we have what's called the cauldron, which is essentially oh, yeah. a party. Oh, we looked into that. Okay, because we live nearby the stadium. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've been big K-State fans, but gosh, that's so far away. And we were like, well, this is nearby. It, it's actually moderately priced when you look at it compared to other things. If you're trying to buy, like, mm-hmm. good seats somewhere at, like, Chiefs mm-hmm. or Royals, you know what I mean? It gets up there. Uh, we were like, you know what? I mean, we might be able to do this. We were like, well, it, it's got to be in the cauldron, right? We want to be in that rowdy, like, jump around. There are, like, rules. You are joining a club when you do that. And, like, you are – you have to go to some extra, like, social events so you know the people, right? Like, you have to, like, be mm-hmm. a part of the club. Mm-hmm. You have to, like, chant. They will pass out the chants. And you are not sitting and hanging out and not chanting. Yeah. Like, you're in that cauldron. It's got to be the cauldron, right? So you're being held to that standard. You will chant and you will scream around, right? And it's such – we do kind of want to do that because – 
not only have I been thrown out of soccer games, Tom, but we've also, you know what I mean, been hassled and, and told we've been mm-hmm. loud and rowdy at stadiums, stadiums, stadiums. I hate that, yeah. I, I've told some people, oh, I'm like, you came during- to the stands, not to sit down and be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, trust me. At the UFC pay per view, uh, or excuse me, not pay per view, but ESPN event, uh, during the main event, we stood as the main event was starting, and someone behind me said, "Can you sit down?" And I said, "No." no. And I just like, and I just gestured to the rest of the audience standing up. I said, "No." And no. I just went, "You see that? Yeah. We're not. This is in a sitting time." Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've told people. No, I, I, I always this. just tell them, "I'm like, shut up. Turn around. Watch the game. Like, leave me alone. Turn around and watch." Well, the game. I just say like. I I concede if I'm the only one, right? If I'm the only sure. jerk off in yeah. the section if you're, standing you're up, tackle him, goddamn it, right? And everyone's like, He's or trying. saying, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. I I will sit down. But if sixty percent or more of my section is standing up, well, then you're also standing yeah. up. Like I'm not conceding well, that. And so here's the thing, like, man, okay, you came to a high pressure thing, right? It's a stadium, it's a game. A lot of people are invested in this emotionally. You know that. Man, you know that, and you didn't buy a suite. You bought a ticket, and you didn't buy any tickets to guarantee that you knew who you were sitting around. That's part of the risk you take in public, that you might encounter somebody who doesn't abide by your same rules. You Social know what I mean? Norms. Like, and yeah. you knew that, and you came in there, man. Like, shut mm-hmm. up. Turn yeah. the fuck around and watch the game. Yeah, so I do uh, – I would like to go back to a sporting KC game and be in the cauldron because that was just a party and then, oh, by the way, there's a right. soccer game. It God. was just a party the entire it time. It is. Because for me and soccer, I don't get it. They play a best of two. That makes no sense to that me. That is annoying. Uh, that is the most annoying. Offsides yeah. is the dumbest the rule. The needs to be reworked. Well, offsides is the dumbest rule in organized sports because it just allows the defense to be lazy. And if you say, oh, they just sit there and cherry pick, well, then explain why they don't do that in basketball. Your theory is stupid. Uh, I also don't like... Um, well, you can get away with it a couple times in basketball, and then they stop it. <laughs> they get in the way of it. I yeah. Think. Defenses will adjust yeah. to your offensive Play strategy. That's how sports... Right. Yeah, that's how sports work. Yeah. Guess what? Um, You've got anyhow, to... Yeah, I love your defensive that. zones in soccer, but you're going to have to play a little man. Right. It's right. just anyhow, there's a lot with soccer that gets under my skin, but it was a fun time. So with all that being said, that's our lives. And guess what? Spanish announce table uh, date night Friday coming up. Uh, that'll be a fun time. Not yeah. sure what we're doing or when we're doing it, but we are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You get Aiden English right here. That is Boom. great. That is awesome. Yeah. With no shirt. No with shirt, no but shirt. hair. He has the hair. Right. So this is an original. He has head hair. Head hair, right. but head no hair. um yep. no shirt. Hey, so let's get into the news. All right, news, man. We've had a lot of news going on this week. I've got five topics picked out for you, and I haven't even told them what you are. Normally we sit here and we pre coordinate to make it like professional, right? And we boy do we hit the mark on that, right? All the time. Oh, all every the time. time. All the time, every time, every time. It's just how we do here at the Spanish Announce Table. So Tom, let's get one of the biggest things out of the way. Harlem Heat, Tom, are going in to the Hall of Fame. Right? Right? Harlem How Heat. awesome is that? Hey, and by the way, Dave Meltzer, uh, suck it from the back and DX suck it in your mouth. Uh, saying that Stevie Ray doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Yes, you know why? Because he was a part of Harlem Heat, and Harlem Heat is Hall of Fame worthy. Now, if you separate the two careers, who had the better career, Booker T or Stevie Ray? Yeah, we're going to go Booker T. But that doesn't mean that tag team of Harlem Heat is not Hall of Fame worthy. So if you're in the damn tag team, that means you're Hall of Fame worthy. Dave Melzer, you, my friend, are a cancer to this industry. <laughs> Yeah, he, is, um, he can suck it every time. Yeah, I am. Um, well, and it's similar. We'll kind of hit on that whole. Yeah, maybe Stevie Ray wouldn't. You know, you wouldn't be like, hey, let's put him in the Hall of Fame. Uh, but as right, but as Harlem, Harlem Heat, Heat you know, you and Vince McMahon hinted at now, that in the storyline. Now here's the question that I have for you because you brought this up with the DX uh, mm-hmm. induction. One person missing from the DX induction uh, is Rick Rude. One person, at least from the photo of the induction that is missing from Harlem Heat, is Sensational Sherry. What do you think about that? Yeah, because she was you there put for her in a long, yeah, a large portion. But so Teddy Long also managed them for a while too, didn't he? Yeah, I mean they had kind of a carousel of managers yeah. uh, towards the end of their run. However, to it me, was, it was Sherry. Yeah, 
It was Sherry. Yeah, yeah. Sherry I mean, the infamous was the promo li- that will live she on. She was there. It's not Sherry. Yeah, she's <laughs> always there, right? And yeah. there was always so many times that they won the tag. T- titles especially early on as they're establishing who they were to me it's just i see her celebrating with them so yeah. i don't know that was one where you know you say dx uh you're not putting rick rude with dx yeah because i can't think of any one thing yeah, that uh, know, rick rude ever said in dx but sherry i can think of yeah. many infamous moments but, you know but i don't necessarily think of it as like it was led by her true you know right I mean? yeah it was two guys right. with a manager who was assisting not we, led right. by if we put in the long-running manager of a lot of famous people and whenever they went in you know what mm-hmm. i mean like that then yeah. then that'd be like if it was like under the giant and then bobby heenan goes in too because you know yeah well i mean that's giant. an individual yeah i understand <laughs> right. what you're saying yeah um paul Heyman yeah, when think brock lesnar goes in right yeah i definitely think that that was a good induction because it you know we mentioned how it's like, man, why are we putting six to ten people in every single time? Well, this to me kind of throws a curveball where it's like, well, we haven't even like scratched the surface of WCW tag teams, right? You have the Steiner brothers, you have um, the Nash boys, you have uh, Hall and Nash, which I mean, we're going to get into the NWO here in a little bit, probably in the co- next couple of years, but mm-hmm. there's still a lot of really good WCW tag teams that n- are still not in, which I think Harlem Heat leading that little charge, as you could say, uh, is a good introduction to that realm of pro wrestling. Yeah. Now, what we've hit on is Booker T's already in the Hall of Fame, right? Two so, time. So... The interesting factor here is now we've said it was Ric Flair was the only two times. Shawn Michaels will be because they're the headliner uh, with DX here. And then Booker T. That's an interesting third, yeah. right? That's a very interesting mm-hmm. third. I don't discredit Booker T two time because there is those two distinct portions, right? There was Harlem oh, Heat yeah. that by itself, when it ended as Harlem Heat, is a Hall of Fame worthy career. And then mm-hmm. Booker T starting from then on to what he did is a Hall of Fame worthy career. So Definitely. I love that, right? I love mm-hmm. that. I, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that's fine. It's just interesting that his came before probably so many others that could hit that mark eventually, you know? Oh, a Hulk Hogan, right? Because the NWO right. could go in. Even a Nash uh, Hall. All of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like right. all of yeah. them. Steve Austin yeah. somehow. Well, I don't Scott know about Hall. Steve Austin. No, Steve Austin probably only won, huh? Unless they counted the Hollywood yeah, Blondes, which no, they probably going... wouldn't. They'd be really reaching for that. Yeah. That's really reaching. It'd be yeah, local, like true. if they were in Dallas or something, right? And they were like, eh. yeah, right. <laughs> in Atlanta, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, or Cincinnati for Brian yeah. Tillman since he was so from Harlem Heat. Great. I haven't heard anybody other than Meltzer really be like, "That's stupid. I don't like it." Well, because Meltzer's just a jerk off, right? He is. All right, let's hit uh, Kurt Angle retirement, huh? What do you? Well, thoughts, man? easy. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Right. Okay, but it's you're, an you're announced, retired. like you know what I mean. Yeah. So let's take it at You're face value. Retired. What are your thoughts? Because it's hard to know. Oh, definitely. It's hard to know until until hindsight helps us out mm-hmm. anymore with wrestling. But this one feels like it could be legit. Yeah, and he's 50 years old. Right. Uh, he and us as the community he can, can the definitely wagon understand. Anytime. Well, I just, you know, he's yeah. lost speed. You yes. know, there's, there's not the same yeah. type of Kurt Angle from wrestle, 2010. But... He yeah, he go. could put on your Hogan type right. match that right. would get him through a, a twelve minute whatever. But sure. Kurt Angle, you know, is Kurt Angle throwing people around German soup. He ain't doing that anymore. No. So I think it's perfect. You know, one of the rumors is that John Cena. That seems stupid to me, right? Yeah. To me, that seems dumb. You know where? I, okay, Gable. so Kurt Angle's retirement match. What now? Yeah, you're going with Gable. No, I mean, that would be great from the right. father son kind right. of thing. But who would you? So you can go John Cena, but who would you put at that retirement match for Kurt Angle? Oh, gosh. Kurt Angle retirement match, huh? Who's like an up and coming on the main event cusp? No, you're not even. Mm-hmm. What do you what? Mm-hmm. What are you good? I don't even. Because that's the angle I'm so doing. You gotta Okay, you, I'll give you some time to think about it because I put you on the spot. You know who I'm putting him uh-huh. in with as his last match? Because it's a once in a lifetime. Because we're saying this is a retirement match. And like you said, face value, right? Well, we're going to do it once in a lifetime, never done in WWE. But it's the match between Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe, right? If you think oh, 
Kurt Angle's greatest rivals. I don't necessarily always think of John Cena. Now, up there, right? Because John Cena's first match. And then when John Cena won the world title before Kurt Angle left, there was a lot of Kurt Angle John Cena's. But after Kurt Angle left TNA, that huge impact. I mean, that iconic. I mean, that's he yeah. headbutts Soma Joe, and then Joe stands up, and then they're awesome matches where you know they had those initial uh, matches there. Then they did like a a pseudo MMA fight. Then they wrestled for all the title belts in TNA. Like that's one of Kurt Angle's greatest rivals. And for me, if you if you're gonna say Kurt Angle's career is over, I think those two wrestling in WWE, especially at the WrestleMania level, needs to happen. So for me, I'm doing yeah. Samoa Joe because he can he can do anything in Kurt Angle. Well, see, and I like that. That's kind of the idea I was thinking of. I just didn't think of the TNA guys because I thought it was somebody already done. But somebody mm-hmm. at that level is what I was thinking about, right? Like they're in the waters of the main event storyline, but mm-hmm. they can drop down be that U.S. title guy. But I I was trying to think of somebody. Also physically big enough to go up against Kurt Angle, too. And that one I was blanking on. Who's new that's mm-hmm. that size that's kind of got a hot run right now? And there really isn't of that level at the right. moment. Now, well, the hard maybe part, like a Drew McIntyre, yeah. but we've seen it. Mm-hmm. But Baron I mean, he'd Corbin. be a good one. Yeah, Baron Corbin, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He needs some work. Yeah. yeah. Now, the hard part with the Samoa Joe thing, just if we're taking what you know we currently have, is Samoa Joe is a – United States champion on SmackDown and Kurt Angle is a oh, yeah, right. mid card t- t- yeah. well, So that's going to be hard, right? Well, but if I'm could, doing that, that's what I, you know. Feature, I, they don't do any of this always. You could feature the champ without the championship being on the line, even at main, you know what I mean? Like, he's going up against the current United States championship. Obviously, it's his retirement match. You know what I mean? The title isn't on the line because he would just have to vacate it right away. So we're just not going to do that, right? But eh, right. Right? he has a chance to beat the standing think- US champion. <laughs> Yeah, and I just think the John Cena thing plays too much to John Cena's character. Like I said, I don't think of Kurt Angle's greatest rivals as John Cena. I mean, he's up there as well, I mentioned, but it, I think it, of yeah, I think of Kurt Angle as John Cena's greatest rivals. If that makes any sense, and right. also on top of that, I mean, John Cena lost in what nine seconds last year to Undertaker. We're gonna have him lose again, or what if he wins and just disappears? Then that's the last. Time we see Kurt Angle. And, and, I, right. this, that just doesn't make sense. That's what yeah. I mean. It's it 2019. Me. John Cena shouldn't be retiring, folks. Right. Or especially now losing in four seconds because it seems like every match he's doing right now is just losing in a couple minutes, right? Nakamura, Roman Reigns, Undertaker. And those are good names, but I'm just saying, like, it feels. Well, Finn yeah. Balor is another one that he's losing lost to. that quickly. Maybe uh, Nikki like, Bella left him because he was winning too quickly. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know I mean? Finish the first. Finish line first, yep. Mm-hmm. All right. All right uh, what do we got? <laughs> uh, so Kurt Angle retiring. All right. Let's hit this one real quick because then we'll move on. Uh, Jim Ross reportedly signing with All Elite Wrestling one mil three years. Boo. Mm-hmm. Now Hasn't look. said that it's necessarily commentating, but you know it is. Oh, I don't think it is. No, 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 no. I oh, don't, don't think, think it is. It is? He's no. been saying in, in things before he signed that that when he was announcing he was leaving WWE that he wants to like work commentating again. He thinks he can still go. Now I haven't heard that. So if that's the case, well then yeah, I'm wrong, and it's not the first time I've ever uh, been I wrong. Mean, God. I, I assumed this was going to be a hey, Cody and the Young Bucks need help with and that I've, back right. office stuff because they're going to be in the ring. And he's yeah, going to be shows how WWE that. did it, right? Like, you know what I mean? Right. We'll see if it works for us, right? Yeah, I, and I hope you're right. And, and maybe it's a and I think, maybe he does some a little bit of both, right? And I think you know, obviously, hey, we need someone with stability that can get our feet underneath us and make sure that we're not, you know, ass over elbow losing money. Right? He's willing to work a However, lot too, because as we all know, his wife passed recently, and he's looking to, like he's even said, he's looking to get out of the house. You know what I mean? Like do something. Yeah. So. You know, How, however, the reason why I initially booed that is one, if it's commentary, it just you're stealing a voice. If right. you're going to start a new company, you want to have a signature voice who is your own. That's why I've never been a fan of, hey, we have a new company. You know who should we get? Joey Styles Hulk or Hogan. you know who we should get? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just no. And then second, on top of that, you know. Uh, Jim Ross was doing an amazing job, better than probably anyone in the history of pro wrestling as that talent acquisitions, but that was also 1998, you know? Right. 
his style of wrestling isn't the style of wrestling of today. So I just think if you're a new company and you're trying to go forward and be different than WWE light, then you don't bring in WWE light, right? Like right. you don't bring in Jim Ross. You don't bring in Hulk Hogan. You don't bring in, you know, just guys hanging around. Like you could have them as consultants. That's where I think it's okay. Right. Hey, what yeah. bounce this idea off you, Jim, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Your next... But as like an executive or anything like that, I just think, nah, yeah, their, no, their next hire is John Laurinaitis. It. Right. You know, it's like, nope, we're 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 doing things wrong. Oh, we're bringing Bruce Pritchard over. You know, like yeah. I know he went back to WWE, right. but you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, Tony Schiavone is going to be our commentator. No, nah, I don't I don't want it. You know, yeah, we're be bringing new, in Mike today. <laughs> yeah. Like, we don't need to be doing that. Uh, Create your uh, own voice, your gross. own yeah. niche. Make yeah, your own. There's a reason nobody listens to that impact. anymore or watches that anymore. Right. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we'll move on. We'll see how that works out for them. Alexa Bliss to host this year's WrestleMania. What are your thoughts on that? Well, at least there'll be something I like to look at. Mm. You know? Mm. You know. Now, uh, I think she's beautiful. But I also think I don't need an extra 45 minutes of segments, right? You know, yeah, I don't need her coming least, out saying. At least 12 segments, right? And you got to know that she's going to be involved in the SNL guys skits oh, backstage because yeah. oh, yeah. they're the correspondents. Well, I thought they would be the correspondents and that's all we need. That's all we need. Apparently right. we need a host and correspondents. And so it just adds, I don't know. It feels like we're adding an extra hour that doesn't need to be added by doing correspondence and a host. And then these people not only are talking to us, then they're going to talk to talent backstage and yada. I I think the host idea really works to have a guiding theme. Should they want it right? Like, and they can weave in and out of the special guests and stuff. And it helps that flow of storylines across the entire evening. Right. So I get the point of that. Right. Um, now I don't think they should force it every year. Right. Like if you don't have that idea of a theme that you're going to go in and out and try to tie it all together, which this year does not feel like they have going on. Right. It feels like they're booking this thing swiftly out of their ass right now. Uh, So I don't. Yeah, I'm worried it's going to get a little convoluted. I I am. Even though she's great and probably will do great of what she's asked to do. But, you know. Yeah, it's a 10 hour show that we don't need to make 12. That's my initial thought. Mm -hmm. I like that, you know. If we're peeling back the curtain, as I like to say, um, apparently she's still injured with concussions or some type of injuries and they need to focus her because she is one of the best women's talent on either roster. So I understand the like, don't forget about Alexa. Right. So now we're going to make her the host. I understand that aspect of getting talent over and keeping the talent in our mind as we you know, wait for her to be 100 percent healthy. But again. I just don't like have her be a manager of an existing match, right? She can jump on the Nia Jax Tamina thing as they go after Beth Phoenix and Natty. I just don't feel like a host is ever needed. The I, host I to me, you know, when the rock well, did ever, it, but yeah, anyway, well, but when the rock did it, it was, well, fuck the rocks back, right? Like that's a different thing. And when Hogan did it, it was like, Oh Hogan. But then that first segment was with Austin and the rock. And you go like, has there ever been a better first segment of WrestleMania than that? No. So that's what I like. Yeah. I just don't know if we're going to do that with Alexa Bliss. Because uh, they are kind of missing some of the, the point here is the MC is technically the host, right? They're the master of ceremonies. The person out there announcing the matches, uh, mm-hmm. that's the host gig typically of, of any event like that, right? Like that's the person announcing the this and the that, right? Because – now, with wrestling, it's a little different because we're getting a peek backstage, right, of this make-believe world, right, that's that's going on. So, you know, that person isn't doing that. So, I get, you know what I mean? So, I, yeah, I guess I don't I, – I can see how it can be used right. I just don't have faith that they'll use it right, or that they often do. Yeah, I just think it's going to be more filler where I'm going to like, okay, well, Alexa Bliss is on the TV. I guess I can go refill my drink yep. or, you know. Well – in happier WrestleMania thoughts, uh, it is announced that next year's WrestleMania 2020, Tampa, Florida, and Tom and Tim, we're going to be there. We are. We're going. We're it's going. It's going to be so much fun. So uh, let us know now uh, um, if you got a place we can stay on the way. 
Uh, you know what I mean? Like, hit us up, right? Like, we'll, we'll do a show live at your house. Uh, all you got to do is, is provide us beer, um, uh, a bed, two beds, two beds. Let's make that very clear. Two mm-hmm. beds, beer, um, you know what I mean? TV, and I think we'll be great, right? Just don't bother us. Yeah, and leave us alone. Yeah, yeah and leave just us leave alone. us alone, right? Show yeah. us where the bathroom is, yeah. right? Well, we'll actually, Uber eats, we could just we occupy. Well, it, well, actually, if we could just occupy your house and you leave, mm. that would be best. But before you leave, make sure it's clean. Table show at gmail.com. If you don't want that, if you just want to loan us, uh, you know, expenditure money like hotel money, uh, uh, or not even loan us, just lend, you know, just give to us. Uh, you can do that. Table show at gmail.com through PayPal, right? Just give it mm. to us, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we're going to go. We're going to get the travel packages when they are released here in a couple months. Uh, it's going to be the ultimate Spanish announce table mandate uh, extravaganza. We'll probably do a podcast down there, all the fun stuff. But yeah, oh, yeah. Tampa, we're I like it. We're about to get searched the one thing, by yeah. TSA, man. We're bringing some equipment. <laughs> The, the one thing that I am nervous about because of my luck in this world is it's an out show and they have gone 34 WrestleManias with no weather. Issue. I know. And this is going to be the one fucking hurricane. time where it's going to be a downpour yeah. the entire day. Who knew a hurricane in early April? Florida. This, this <laughs> blew it all away. It's it's where they all season. died. They all goddamn died. <laughs> They were just trying to watch hey, Roman Reigns. WrestleMania. That's appropriate. That's kind of on brand. Right. They were just trying to watch Roman Reigns, and then you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Seth Rollins said, "Burn it down," and then there was a tornado. <laughs> I'm excited, though. I'm sure we'll know many people that are somehow down there, either from this show or previous things that we've done, or just friends in life. Uh, so we'll, I'm sure you know what I mean. Rob Schamberg will probably be down there. We'll probably talk to him down there. We'll have a blast down there. And I'm also excited for how the show will most likely be perceived from the talent because a lot of the talent lives in Tampa because, you know, they first moved down because of the performance center. They grabbed a house. They stay in the house, yada, yada, yada. So you know that the talent will probably go a little bit above and beyond because this is a little bit more special of a show because they'll deem it their hometown, uh, adopted hometown. So we might see some really cool things that we might not see if it was in New York or San Francisco, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to go down there. Um, and, and on the real, if, if you guys are interested in a little meet and greet, reach out to us, uh, let us know and we'll decide if we want to meet and greet you and we'll get back to you. So, uh, that's about the news. Did I got, Tom, unless you found anything else interesting that you need to hit before we take a break, huh? No, let's take a break, get into our general thoughts of yeah. the wrestling week as yeah, we get we onto a, this road to yeah. WrestleMania. Yeah, we had a big fast lane pay-per-view and then all the fallout from that as we ease into WrestleMania. Uh, we'll talk about all of it. We'll talk about all of it when we come back to the Spanish announce table. Fast lane 2019 is the first time that Sasha Banks has successfully defended a WWE championship on the main roster. The Spanish announce table. Spanish announce table, episode 252. We just, just, just merged out of the fast lane, right? Or no, we're in the fast lane now. We merged Mm -hmm. into the fast lane, and now we're really cooking on our way to WrestleMania, right? That's the correct Mm -hmm. metaphor. We are in the fast lane because fast lane has passed. Raw and SmackDown have passed. We're recording this on a Wednesday night because this is the best day in podcast recorded on a Wednesday. No doubt. No doubt. Now, I mean, these may be out of order of how they happen and, and, and of importance, but we're just kind of breezed by some of the ones that don't matter. So if I didn't mention your favorite storyline, sorry. sorry. Donate money. Sorry. Let's talk uh, first thing here. Shane McMahon heel turn. Everybody saw it coming a mile away. Uh, maybe not exactly at this moment, but we figured it was going to happen sometime before Mania, right? And happened at Fastlane. Um, I liked it. I like how he's hitting on the uh, uh, that he made him go to sleep while he's looking at his dad. Right? That was good. Yeah, I like that. However, you know the the reasoning for him turning heel, quote unquote. I feel like should be the reason why he should have went ultra babyface. Now I'm glad that Shane has finally gone heel because his babyface promos are dry and stale and mundane and monotone, and I'm not a fan of that. Uh, so him spicing it up a little bit by grabbing some ring announcers and saying introduce me the certain way, okay, right? It's a little bit more interesting than what you were doing the last time. But his reasoning of the only reason Miz wanted me to be his partner was to make his dad happy. Yeah. Fuck off. Like, 
Everyone would agree with that, right? right. How many times has you ha- have you been asked to like, hey, I, I need a friend here to help with, you know, uh, getting a girl or I need a friend here to help me tell my mom that I'm right, you know, when you're a kid, stuff like that. You're like, well, fucking want like that's your thing. That's not my thing. Don't drag me into it. And I feel like Shane McMahon was dragged into getting Miz's approval from his father, which fuck off. So I'm it's a heel turn, but I'm almost siding with Miz in the storyline. Yeah, it, I mean, I do like that. Like the everybody's been looking for me to help them get ahead, right? What can I do for you, right? What you need some money, you need some influence, or whatever, right? I like that. That's a good reason to turn heel and finally be like, screw y'all, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I get that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, I do like that he called Mrs. Dad a ta- his potato face or whatever. He was like his potato face yeah. mother. Yeah. God, that was fun. I, um, and, and, and the grabbing the, the me, ring announcer and stuff, that was real good too. I like that a lot. Definitely. And to me, I don't know. We've tried this Ms. Babyface thing, and Ms. is just a dickhead. <laughs> like, fuck him. You know what I mean? Like, not fuck him. He probably has good friends. His wife loves him. You know, he's probably a great father. But just, mm-hmm. he's not cool. He's yeah. not cool. When he tries to be cool, you just want to punch him in the face. That's why when he leans into being a heel, you're like, that's the fucking man. Because heel Miz is cool. But when he wants to be babyface Miz, I want to punch that guy in the face with the stupid Cleveland shirt. And it just, it's corny. He's corny as fuck yeah, as a baby. Face. And like, they tried it and it sucked. He's almost like the Young Bucks trying to be like John Cena. Instead of trying mm-hmm. to do whatever they're trying to be like, right? Or it's like the young bucks trying to flex. It's like you both don't have muscles, you shits. What are you doing? <laughs> I like you know? that. Um, so I mean, yeah, that'll continue. That'll be a match at Mania, and yada yada yada. Uh, the Usos, where do they go from that? Huh? They they, they, they had a good uh, promo saying like, "Hey, whoever, right? Bring it." Yeah, it, and I think the one they ended on was the best matchup for them. The yeah. Hardys and the Usos, right? Brothers versus brothers. I think that says it for themselves. It's you know, mania, it, there's not sold. much that has to go. It's, right. There's not much that has to go into that. And, you know, the Hardys could say, like, we came back at Mania. You know, they could maybe do like a farewell thing a little bit to where, you know, we came back at Mania and we want to end at Mania and we want to beat the best brothers because we think we're the best brothers of all time. Uso's heart is right there. Just kind of tells itself. Um, but side note, mm-hmm. did you catch this about the Hardys? This is one thing that just I'd be so pissed if I was Bray Wyatt. Matt Hardy faked retired just to get away from Bray Wyatt. That's a <laughs> real thing that happened. He faked retired so that he could just go with Jeff because he didn't want to be with Bray Wyatt anymore. There was no reason for him to leave. Nope. He just was like, I'm retired. I'm okay, retired. we believe you. Nope, I'm back with the Hardys. Well, you said you were retired. I lied. That Why? was broken Matt Hardy or Woken or whatever the fuck that guy was. Yeah. Now I'm just Matt Hardy, V2. Back to that one. But he, I mean, like, yeah, breaking kayfabe. He legit retired just to get away from Bray Wyatt. That poor bastard. Hey, man, Bray Wyatt's hard to get away from. He's, he's a persistent guy. Yeah. Mm. He's like the ringworm. All right, Triple H Batista. Some fun in the promos. A little weird. No, no, that you didn't was like it at all, the huh? worst. No, that was the worst promo of Triple H's career. I think this is what it was. Give me what I want. I'm not gonna give you what I want. Give me what I want. I'm not gonna give you what you want. Give me what I want. What is it you want? You know. Okay. That that was it. There was. No, I like why? the. We yeah, don't understand that... why Batista wants the match. We, right. I mean. Well, the 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 parts of him being like you were always looking down at me, you were always talking shit on me, you were always keeping me, you know, what I mean that stuff. That's enough to go off of there. Yeah, that part, the shouting back and forth, I was like, guys, was what, what is going thing. on here? Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the yelling at yeah. back and forth, and then the I'm not going to give you what I what you want. Okay, this is what you want. Then fine. It's on my terms, but then it's it on my terms. It was a matter of moments. Well, well, whose terms is it on? Yeah, no, I, I get, I get you there. No, I, I just think there was a few things in there that I was like, yeah, all right. I like his Guardians yeah, of the Independence. Yeah, there's kernels scene. of good things. <laughs> right. right. Now, yeah, but then, <laughs> yeah, he's such an idiot. He said, I'm not doing this on your terms. I'm making this a no hold to bar. Well, then you're still doing it on his terms. Yeah. You dumb shit. It's just, that was one of the just 
I don't know. And Batista, you, you know, you can't do take twos, right? It's not Hollywood. Mm. But fucking spitting all over himself was distracting. Uh, I just, I hated it. Mm. It was so underwhelming. It was lame. It was the lamest thing of the week. Well, let's hit the, one of the biggest stories. The Kofi Kingston saga continues, right? I mean, we had him hoodwinked into a, a handicap match at Fastlane, and then now it's dropped. He's got to win a... A gauntlet, gauntlet match, match. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Vince McMahon stuff, the promo on SmackDown between them two, when he's like, I mean, honestly, I mean, like, yeah, you know, you're you're tremendous, but I mean, like, you're gonna you're gonna go in the Hall of Fame, but because of this, right? Like, not and that, how, how are you doing, right? who is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, was how very, true was? That? Yeah, it was. It was very true. Yeah. Now, my favorite. My favorite part of this, and I really wish it was Daniel Bryan who would have said it instead of Vince McMahon said Daniel Bryan said, Mm -hmm. but that Daniel Bryan said that Kofi Kingston is a B-plus player was fucking perfect. But I hope next week Daniel Bryan could say, yeah, like Triple H told you, I think you're a B-plus player. That, I mean, full circle for Daniel Bryan, right? Like that is just... Full circle and... very awesome. insulting at the same time, right? Like, yeah, really for, well. uh, yeah, for that mm-hmm. underdog B plus player to overthrow the system, get in a position of power and then say, well, this actually is the B plus player, well, Kofi Kingston. And I liked how they basically were like, they let it seem like Big E and Xavier Woods were about to get fired by the way. They were like, nah, fuck this man. You know what I mean? Like he was like insulting his ego. You know what I mean? He's like, he's, mm-hmm. he's like even bigger than your ego. And I like how he's like, look, hey, nothing's bigger than my <laughs> Right? Like, come on. Which is probably right? true. The, the one part of the promo that – now, I liked Kofi Kingston's part a lot, right? When he said, I've, you know, never – what was it? I've never seen my kids trick-or-treat never or something like that because I've always been here. Missed his first – And, and uh, the thing where it was like – yeah, tooth came out or something. But the part where he was like, I'm not complaining – just tell me what I can do because I'm going to do it. I like that mm-hmm. part, right? It was the just I, I'm tired of complaining. Complaining obviously doesn't work in this situation. So what I'm going to do is just prove you wrong again. And I was like, fuck, yeah. The part where it got a little bit uncomfortable where I was like, stop being a fucking punk ass bitch was uh, Big E and Xavier Woods just continually talking for Kofi. It was Big E says, you got to understand this man. And then Kofi, or, and then uh, Xavier Woods go, yeah, this man has done so much. It's like, you know, the guy isn't yeah. a mute. Well, but he I do like this. how he came in. He was like, hold on, hold on, this ain't worth you getting fired over. <laughs> right? Like, like right. I got this, man. I got it. Yeah. But I do like Big E's when he was like, we've done everything, man. We've been every, we've been every meet and greet. We've done every, everything, everything, mm-hmm. which there was probably so much real in that statement he said whether he wrote it or not you know what i mean he's like yo yeah. man yo well, we don't that's miss. the second <laughs> part of the storyline that i think would hit, that would hit better for me is okay so now kofi has to go through this gauntlet match right where if he really wants this wrestlemania thing he'll have to go through like orton joe and the bar okay but now you know if, if you're vince you're still also pissed at big e and Xavier, so what are they going to do? Like, it's been so Kofi-centric, which is fine, right? Because you can't, you know, get away from what we're trying to get at here, and that's Kofi should be the champ kind of thing, right? And that's, uh, I'm not into it, but I understand it. But it should also be, and hey, don't, let's not forget about Big E and Xavier. I don't know if maybe, you know, at Mania, they should have to go through a tag team gauntlet, right, to keep their jobs. Or you have Luke Harper return and join Daniel Bryan, and then you can do Luke Harper and Rowan as the recycle uh, rejects versus the New Day, you know? Uh, Over on Twitter, at B underscore double underscore D, and you can do this too. You can use hashtag tweet the table when you're on Twitter, and we'll read some of them here. says, I'm sorry, Kofi's cool and all, but I really don't get the whole he's got to be champ thing. Why? Because he's been there for a long time? Doesn't mean he has to be champ. I just don't really get it. Hashtag tweet the table. I think... WWE saw this as a moment where they were like they they put Kofi in place of Mustafa Ali, which is where they were going, right? Mm-hmm. Mustafa Ali, everybody's behind mm-hmm. him, everybody won it, and then Kofi got a great reaction, and then people were like, "Hey, Kofi," and they were like, "Okay, okay, okay, okay," right? And now they got to go with it, right? Because they went with it, and now 
they're getting this, that, which we don't get it either. I mean, I, I don't necessarily not get it. I understand what happened, and I get why some people went, oh, yeah, okay, Kofi, then him, right? So I guess I get so why some of the how bandwagon works, right? People are just kind of like, oh, yeah, all right. And he's hitting okay on it, right? So I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. And if we're going to talk yeah. about they've got to keep recycling and move storylines along, well, there's another one that we haven't seen. Kofi overcoming the odds, right? Yeah. Vince McMahon basically mm-hmm. telling him, "You suck, man. I don't. You know what I mean? Like, you're good enough for this, but I don't see you in, on the poster, right? Like, fine, I'll, I'll roll with it. It's it does seem odd that it's happening at Mania. I'll give it. I'll give you that. Well, and it, again, my whole beef with the storyline isn't the storyline in itself. It was just that he didn't do anything to spark this revolution. This right. this up- uproar of he needs to be the champ. It was he lost a gauntlet match for Christ's sake. He lost, and it wasn't even that impressive. Seth Rollins did it better, in my opinion. Uh, so I just don't get what it was. And again, I can I can go back to the genesis of Becky Lynch as the man, right? Turning, quote right. unquote, on Charlotte. That's yep. the that's the that's the genesis of this. And we're well, now at this point. I, I can mean, tell you, you know, that story. The Kofi thing, I just can't. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, it's here now. You know what I mean? But I want to know, yeah, yeah. But I want to know the second part of this because it's essentially the new day is B plus players to me. That's how it's being perceived. So what will Big E and Xavier have to do? So I would have wrote it as McMahon telling him, like, look, I mean, you're a phenomenal athlete. The stuff you do in the Royal Rumble. But he's like, but you know, yeah. Uh, He should have kind of been like, quite frankly, like. You know, if we were going to move somebody into that kind of tier, we always would have thought it would have been Big E. You know what I mean? Like, throw that yeah. back at him and then have them and be then like, throw the hey, dissension. what the fuck? Right, right. Right, yeah, throw the, th- yeah, throw a ring to the New Day, mm-hmm. right? Like, hey, we all know that Xavier's right. the smart one here, and if we're going to go with the top tier star, we want him to be smart. We want the PhD. And right. then go like, whoa, 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 you know? Like, that would have been a fun heel tactic to yeah, use. Yeah, you either, either one of them before you. You? Right, exactly. You've been here 11 you, years. You, you just do fun flips. I, right. <laughs> like, turn it back right. on him. You've been here 11 years and can't mm-hmm. break through, man. Wait, wait, wait. Definitely. Yeah, all right. Um, let's see what else we got. Okay. So, coming off of that, we got Daniel Bryan. What's up with the Kevin Owens now? Mustafa Ali still hanging around. Yeah. Where do we go with all this? I, the only thing I can think of is maybe the week before WrestleMania put those two in a uh, Andre the Giant. Because someone's got to win that Andre the Giant. Yeah. I think a, you know, a good name for that would be Kevin Owens because he's kind of lost in the shuffle. But have let's 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 flip this already, right? The the baby face Kevin Owens, no one likes. Yeah. He doesn't even like it. He walks out just going like, I would rather cuss you guys out. Can't do so it for let's long, do yeah. right. So let's just do the week before Mania, the go home for SmackDown. Kevin Owens and Ali is in a match. Uh, they kind of lose or something happens. Owens turns. The only Ali, way you're gonna throw get him a- in the uh, Andre Johnson. Yeah, the only way you're going to get a good Kevin Owens face run is if it's one of those like um, working class uh, yeah. hero kind of roles. You don't want right? the fat guy kind of thing, right. you know. And going back to the uh, Kofi Vince McMahon storyline, they 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 brushed up against it, right? They just kissed a very controversial storyline that I wish they'd lean into a little bit more. Yeah, they but do one line hint. that Kofi said. Well, one line that Kofi said is, you never want people that look like me to be your champion. And now I'm paraphrasing like me that. Or I didn't people get like me or something like that, yeah. Yeah, and that's when it can be well, a McMahon racial, oh, man. McMahon yeah. looked uncomfortable when he and said that's it. He like, when, mm, mm, and that's next. when we can get some money into this storyline, right? You know now we're getting into something that we can really get behind, right? You got to steer into it. That's something I saw in the news, too. Fox. I guess is wanting WWE when they switch to pick it up and quote, not give into the PC culture and make more, you know what I mean? Like a little more risk. Right? Yeah. Right. I get, you know, this is, you know, if you were to put the quotes of Spanish announce table, especially from my side of talking in this microphone, one of my go to lines and I will go to my grave saying this is, I understand the PC culture in the sense of people being real on reality shows and things like that. However, in the land of fantasy, we're trying to tell the story of Jesus and no one's allowed to play the devil. Like you have to go yep. a little bit extreme, a little bit yeah. into it, you know? I'm all for PC, right? In in when we're talking about 
groups of people in public having to coexist amongst each other. But when we're talking about <laughs> television shows that you can change and now Stories. there's 5,000 options available to you, you know what I mean? This isn't three channels and you got to pick one <laughs> anymore. So, yeah, I, you should be fine. Say what you want to say. Yeah. All right. Um, where are we going to go from here? The Lynch, Flair, Rousey. Uh, it's still, I mean, it is what it is now, right? Like, And we're, and we're on our way. And I guess we're just going to get promos and beat downs between here and now. But we did get Dana Brooke in this one. Which, I mean, but that's a good sacrificial lamb, right? Like, Ronda's got to beat she up. And I thought Dana did uh, fine. She beat the tar out of her. That one was fun, right? I mean, she tossed her around. And then I like the, now you got to pay 60 bucks to see that. <laughs> and so what did you think by that, by that line? Because I think it's a great line, but I took it a different way. So when you hear Rhonda saying you got to pay sixty dollars for an armbar, how do you hear that? I mean, just that like you got to buy the event, but you kind of don't anymore. You can get it for free, but so I didn't take it from the WWE standpoint. I took it as in this shit is pro wrestling. You want to see mm. a real armbar? I'll go over to the UFC. You pay sixty dollars for that because sixty dollars for a pay per view to me signals. UFC pay-per-view. $10 a month is the WWE Network, right? If you're a wrestling fan, you have the network. If you're paying $60, that means you're paying for a boxing or an MMA fight. And to me, she, I thought she was kind of saying, like, if you want to see a real one, I'll go back to the Octagon, pay $60 for that, you'll see some real shit. That's how I heard it when it hit my ears. So if that's the case, that's fucking awesome, right? <laughs> Just odd. That I, I don't know that if, if that's how she meant it, they didn't script it up that way and probably wouldn't be happy if she went mm -hmm. rogue and said it that way, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. And, and let's talk real quick about how the fast lane pay-per-view match with Charlotte and Becky mm -hmm. ended with Rhonda just yeah. punching Becky in the face, which, Hey, look, if you want to punch Becky in the face, fucking cool. Right. Especially if you're heel now, I'm okay with that. But the reasoning is because you want her added to the match. So, again, I get you're the supreme athlete, you know, you're better than everyone else, yada, yada, yada. But also, are you fucking stupid? Like, you added someone and diminished your own chances of winning now, so you probably shouldn't have done that. So now, you just look like an angry dum-dum. Like, yeah, that's the part I didn't get. Like. like, she should have had reasoning. Yeah. And, she came down, and she hey, punched did she her. she a black t-shirt? She came down, she punched her, and then she stood there like she didn't know what to do next. Yeah. She was like, yep, I did that. Mm -hmm. yep. And you see her black shirt? Hopefully that's on uh, WWE Shop. What? Way to pimp out your gear there. She was just wearing a fucking black uh, t-shirt. black shirt. I don't know. Like, <laughs> why are you fucking Ronda shirt? I don't know. That just well, seems weird. It just threw Speaking of something, just a black t-shirt, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Beth Phoenix is wrestling again. Yeah. What What are we doing there? Why? She <laughs> is it. Be she, is it because we need tag teams? She looked like she just got done uh, chopping wood after having swapped out the carburetors on her uh, seventy-two Dodge Dart to come in and have an old wrestling match with the uh, old Jimmy Neidhart's daughter. Uh, you know what I mean? Like what? Mm -hmm. the, she looked like goddamn Barry Windham, nineteen eighty-two. Man, what the fuck was going on with that? First of all, she looked like all she could beat the fuck out of everybody for miles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put her in there with Rhonda. She God looked like, damn. yeah, she physically looks impressive. I, I will say, though, the bump she took from Naya, when when Naya gets her weight behind her, and I'm not just saying, no, because she's big, but I'm just saying she's a 300-pound, 300.5-ounce right. uh, <laughs> motherfucker here. And so when she took that run into Beth Phoenix back, God damn the whiplash on that. That was the most impressive thing of the, of the fast lane night to me. Um but yeah, now we fast forward to Raw. I, I like the back, backstage just, hey, we're going to jump these bitches because we're the tag champs and we can. But it kind of, I don't know, if Nia Jax and, and Confused Tamina go to the backstage and we get uh, the connection starting to beat them up, wouldn't you think that uh, Natty and Beth Phoenix would then also run back there to beat up nope. Beth or uh, to beat up Nia and, nope. and Confused Tamina? Nope. Like. They just stood in the ring and just watched yeah. it. Yeah, it was like uh, uh, <laughs> Barry Wyndham, 1982, 
uh, and Jim Jimmy Neidhart's daughter took on the New Age Head Shrinkers, and. <laughs> Can you hear? Oh, okay. There right. it is. Yep, right. Matt, here Yep. All right, what was that? Okay. So, yeah, the, uh, uh, I said it was like 1982 Barry Windham with Jimmy Neidhart's daughter taking on the New Age Head Shrinkers. Yeah? Who booked yeah. this shit? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't fuck? know. But God damn it, Pritchard is back. Fuck. Man, yep, there it is. I knew it. There I knew it. it. See, there's his mark right there. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, The Shield. One last time. Wasn't that the the Rock and John Cena was a one time only or, or whatever that was? And then they did it immediately yeah, in like but, six months. <laughs> well, and here's the even the weirdest thing to me about that isn't this let, let, again, kind of like the Kurt Angle retirement thing. Let's just take it for face value, yeah. right? It was the last time. But but they're still there. It's yeah, like if right. I put in it's like if I'm leaving a a place I work and I put in a two months notice. Mm-hmm. it's like hey guys well in july this will be that. my last day and then it, you show up on monday and it's this weird but it's not even that know, okay dynamic. let's flash forward seven years and let's say they're all still there and seven years down the road and one of them's getting beat up by two guys or three guys the other two aren't ever gonna help because they'll be like nah i remember we said back in 2019 it was the one last time so we really fucked right. ourselves then huh yeah. Hey. Hey. We we will we will support each oh, other for this good. last time. Yeah. We we have to only support each other this last yeah, time. It doesn't make sense after this. Just dumb. All right. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, oh, but man, McIntyre really punked out Dean Ambrose, huh? Well, Andy gave a concussion, quote unquote, to mm-hmm. Roman Reigns, so they really put him over as a top heel. You know, he looks the part to me. Uh, and it was finally kind of good to see him get that main event spotlight. I think it'll be uh, McIntyre Roman. That's mm-hmm. what I think they're going for. Yeah, I think so too. All right, so uh, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, we have a little dissension among the ranks there, huh, with that whole Asuka storyline. Yeah, how awesome is it that Asuka taps out the hottest talent in WWE to only then be the champion in a secondary storyline about two girls who don't like each other? She's so irrelevant. It could have literally been anyone. That could have been Alicia Fox, and then Alicia Fox picks up two victories over uh, Fire and Ice or whatever they're called. Like right. It's irrelevant that Asuka's the champion in the storyline. It makes yeah, zero it sense really to me. It really does. Yeah, it, yeah, it could have been Alicia Fox. <laughs> Could have been Nikki Cross. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, the revival, Blackishay, Gabriel. It looks like that whole thing's just kind of continuing in a weird. I don't. You know, now that we know about the Tommaso Ciampa neck surgery thing, yeah. and they debuted to the to the main event or to the main roster, it does feel like that should have been DIY. Yeah, and if I tell that, you yeah. DIY revival, and then. Re- Gable, that's a little bit easier story to digest than Blackache. Uh, although I think they should go around with that name. Hashtag tweet table. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm not interested. It's going to be a fun, fine match, right? I'll yes. I'll show a, a a pseudo wrestling fan that Ricochet does a I don't know sixteen hundred eighty frog splash or whatever the fuck it's called. Cool, but like in three weeks after that, I won't remember the fucking match. Yeah, you know? it is a three hundred. Uh... Uh, 0.5 ounce uh, backflip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but right. let's talk about the, the coolest storyline, in my opinion, and mm-hmm. the best promo of the week. Because, you know, I still think that the Ronda, Charlotte, Becky thing is the is the hottest storyline going into WrestleMania. And it obviously should main event because we've just said it enough that it has to happen. Although, uh, but, but with that being said, the best promo of the week, I thought, and the most interesting story uh, of the two shows – uh, was Randy Orton, AJ Styles. Yes, right. How much fun was that? Because both guys were telling the truth. Yeah, and, and that's it. It was so much work shoot going on there. Um, I The thing is, since AJ Styles has been calling SmackDown Live the house that AJ Styles built, I've hated that, right? So now I'm all in on Randy Orton, right? And then everything AJ Styles came back, I was like, true, but you also. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, you needed a group. I'm like, you've had groups. You know what I mean? Like, and he's like, yeah, you know. Yeah, you but AJ like, Styles, you know? <laughs> there's no iconic AJ Styles group that he was a part of. He was a part of Fortune, where he looked like Bullet a Club. doofus Ric Flair. Well, and that's when, and that's when Randy Orton yeah. goes, "You never ripped anything off," yeah. and he did the too sweet. 
thought so that great. was perfect. I thought, yeah, you know, we've talked about this kind of as a as a running um, uh, narrative to the to the show. But one of our favorite things in a feud is that both people are are true to to a certain extent. And right. in this promo with Randy Orton and AJ Styles, I think they're exactly telling the truth. Uh, what is true to them? Where Randy Orton is saying like, "Hey, man." When you're playing suntan and touch butt with Dixie Carter in Florida, I'm up here main eventing with fucking Undertaker. Yeah, well, you were getting ten bucks in a, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. He's like, well, yeah, when you're getting ten bucks to, to, you know what I mean? To, to wrestle in a damn gym, I'm out here debuting on God. Yeah. Well, I just like, yeah. I, I like the like. And he could have even said, like, it was SmackDown. I mean, I was on SmackDown. You weren't here to build it. Like, you might be the guy that, that you know, this might be the house that AJ Styles is maintaining, but you didn't build shit around here, you know? Well, but SmackDown Live sure, is a different yeah, thing, right? Sure. Like, well, you know, go SmackDown, we used the to curtain call back on that too, Diet like, Raw. We all know. You know, they had Raw's yeah, War and the War Raw. Zone, but they didn't have the War Zone. It was still Raw, you know what I mean? Like, Right. Uh, and then even on AJ side, uh, countering uh, Randy Orton. Now the the what did he say about the diamond cutter? Like a yeah, like a second cheap knockoff diamond cutter. Yeah, think, yeah. easy. That's he's he's made that way better than D- DDP yeah, ever right. did. But I get it, right? But the one part where he's like, "You think you could have made it on the indies doing this?" And he posed because yeah. for so long that's all Randy Orton yes, did is just go like. It arms are yeah. in the air and you're like yeah that would have fucking never f- right. who knows right joey ryan has his dick one of the over parts of right. his you know gimmick so who knows but uh yeah i thought both guys told just a perfect story that was my favorite promo of the week it was my favorite thing of the week too i was all in on that and you know that match is going to be awesome they had that one match on smackdown last year i believe it was uh and that match, you know, was spectacular. So going into WrestleMania, I think more so than Brock and Seth or any of those other ma- other matches, uh, Randy Orton versus AJ Styles could steal it. Yeah, I really think that. I'm really in on it. I'm liking it so far. So yeah, um, let's see. Um, God, I guess they're just gonna Joe Andrade Truth Mysterio. Is that all gonna go to Mania? Yeah. Now here's here's the fun thing that I would have done. Right here's the fun thing, but uh, it's like WWE doesn't like fun anymore. So again, let's go with my booking here. I'm saying next week on SmackDown, Joe and that little fun four way thing uh, loses the title to r Truth. In that match, though, Andrade and Rey Mysterio uh, essentially just beat each other up to the backstage, and that's how r they're gone. It's the roll up on Samoa Joe, right? All right. There, yeah. Uh, so at Mania, you're going to get Andrade and Rey Mysterio to settle the score. Hair versus uh, mask, right? That, just do that. Make Andrade fucking bald. Fuck him, right? Uh, but hair versus mask at Wrestle- WrestleMania. Just let's go all in on that, right? Or you schmoz finish and nothing happens, right? Right, yeah, something. But you right. could say that's the match going right. into Mania, right. right? And then next week, on, oh, so then that's this week on SmackDown. The next week on Raw, which was, gives us two weeks, they press Kurt Angle on who he wants to face. He says, you know, the guy I want to face isn't even on this roster. Joe's music hits. It's this guy. Face off. You get Joe and Kurt Angle and Kurt Angle's retirement match at WrestleMania, right? So now our truth is just sitting there with his, you know, thumb in his ass, fucking doing some goddamn flossing or whatever with a uh, plastic face. Yeah, with plastic face uh, Carmelo over there, right? So then you do at WrestleMania, I'm doing the United States Open Challenge. And the person that answers the United States Open Challenge is his childhood hero, John who Cena. he's six years older than, John Cena. That's what you do. Because then if John Cena wins the United States Championship, fucking great. And then he does the next Open Challenge, and it, he loses it to a returning Sami Zayn. And Our then truth. John Cena goes away. Yeah, right. and John Cena goes away, and Sami Zayn's your United States Champion. He plays up the Canadian role. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that. That's way much better than what yep, they're going to do. Yep, I like that. Yeah, but they ain't, they ain't going to do that. Nope, they ain't going to do it. Hey, it looks like the Boston Hug will be getting the Iconics. And the Iconics better win. They are so much better of a oh, team they won't. than the Connection. Ooh, they they're called the Connection. Huh? They might. They could, make, they could have the Iconics win in at Mania. 
Yeah. yeah. And then create the dissension and we finally get the Bailey versus Sasha thing so we can finally get mm-hmm. Sasha to be the bitch that she is. She's a bitch. Now I'm not saying she's not a nice person and her <laughs> husband husband probably loves her, but again, like Rhonda's a better heel than she has face. Sasha is a better heel than she has face. She yeah. needs to be the natural bitch that she is. Uh Braun Strowman disassembled a car. And immediately they put the car and him for sale at Toys R Us. Did you see that? Mm-mm. Not even five seconds, and I'm not even exaggerating that time frame. Not even five seconds after he ruins that red car, on WWE Shop, I believe it is, you can buy that red car and destroy it with Braun Strowman. It's a two pack. I'll send it to you here in a second. Yeah. I mean, goddamn, I, I get it, right? We're trying to sell some stuff, but it doesn't have to be that. Well, yeah, that's when people are, because that's when people are, and then the Google, uh, the Google Home picks up on that, and then that that ad will mm-hmm. show up on their Facebook feed when they're scrolling. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, I want that." And I don't know why it's Southern again. I mean, it makes it's sense, but Jesus Southern Christ, when I, <laughs> when I, when yeah, I do it you so always go it's... with uh, the Rebel Trucker. God damn it, I'm terrible. I'm so bad at that. I apologize again, so, Southern folks. So the rumor that I read though is that Braun Strowman might be making an appearance uh, at, in the lead up to. Mm-hmm. WrestleMania on Saturday Night Live in the perfect. weekend update. Yeah, and it feels like, you know, this will be two years in a row where we get Braun Strowman freak show match, right? So last year he won the tag titles with a 10-year-old who's from Kansas City, and now this year he's going to, I don't know, choke slam Colin Jost apparently. So it feels as if we have a 2019 version of Andre the Giant. And so I kind of like that. I just wish they would go all in on that year round because – I'm starting to like this. The frustrating part for me with Braun Strowman. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say the frustrating part with me with Braun Strowman, though, is that, you know, he does freak show match at WrestleMania, right? And then we get a couple weeks of we got to just move past that. And then he resets to a storyline. He becomes the most over talent. We're all going. And then it's like, we love this. We love this. We love this. They shit the bed with telling a story with him. And then we get to WrestleMania and it's like, hey, let's do another oddball story. It feels like we're almost formulaic with like, he's the most over thing. He should be rewarded at WrestleMania. Nope. Now he's doing a, I don't know, a swim competition with Michael Phelps. You know, like the fuck are we doing? No, he's racing a horse. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, outside of wrestling, I want to see more of Che and Jost, man. I want them, like, I like this odd couple pairing they got. They should go be guest correspondents at, like, every major event. And we should just, like, get little YouTube clips of them just fucking around with people and stuff. The, like the thing that I do respect that I like is, uh, again, peeling back the curtain, Michael Che is a big pro wrestling yeah. fan. He goes summer slams he goes to the wrestlemanias uh if you listen to sam roberts podcast which you should do after this um he uh talks to sam roberts about storylines and things like that so it's cool that at least one of the two really is getting a kick out of doing this and isn't you know looking down upon it with that being said it does seem like colin jost isn't the wrestling fan so i like that they're not just saying he's also a wrestling fan he loves this as well it's like he is saying this is a weird world and i like that they're playing they're they're leaning right. into he's what we kind of already know and i like into that. this right yeah yeah <laughs> right all right um lashley winning the ic title back beating up finn balor well, so here's where I don't – it depends on what you want, right? So if we're saying, you know, hey, we're telling Ronda Rousey to tell you that this isn't real, well, then Bobby Lashley beating, beating up Finn Balor is totally fucking believable. Of course. All yeah, day. like that's that's a 10 out of 10. Yeah. So Lashley as your Intercontinental Champion, yeah, duh. Um, but if we're going, no, we want two sweets and gimmicks and, and demons, well, then what the fuck? doing with finn you know yeah, right like, it doesn't like, it, th- this seems like hey let's make up our mind on what we're doing with wwe and so i don't know i like that the bell distracted finn like i like the finish it seems like this is going to be the match at mania i don't know if it's the best for either guy to be honest right yeah well maybe it's not um uh, okay and then i guess the final one we'll hit on here rollins and lesnar we got shelton benjamin involved with paul Heyman here that was a nice little kind of little bit of some you know some old school thrown in with that i mean 
you know? Yeah, I mean, and it, and it definitely makes sense in regards to Shelton Benjamin as the godfather of one of Lesnar's kids. So right. to say that they are good friends is an understatement. So if anyone would beat up Seth Rollins before we get Brock Lesnar to show up, it would be Shelton Benjamin, right? Right. So I thought that was perfect. What, one thing that I'm getting tired of, and it's not Seth Rollins or Shelton Benjamin's fault, uh, and maybe squashes isn't the right word word I'm looking for here, but I'm tired of, you know, so if we're saying that Seth Rollins is the number one contender for the ultimate championship in WWE, then it shouldn't last longer than two and a half minutes for him to beat. Haven't seen on our TV, Shelton Benjamin, right? One part of this, like, Oh, we got a false finish where Shelton almost pinned Seth Rollins and Seth Rollins like had to come back. That shouldn't be a thing right. when we're saying that this talent is at this level and then another talent we haven't seen in six weeks. If that's the case, then the talent that is at top should be dusting these people. Not to say it should be squashes, but there shouldn't be this element of one, two, kick out. It should just be like, Shelton got a couple punches, but really I got my shit in, right? I got right. my... Spinning back kick, my curb stomp, ha, 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 and I'm go, good going into next week. I, I wish there was a little bit more of a uh, viewable hierarchy. Uh, you know, Not every match has to have a false finish from both guys. We can have right. – and we don't need the, the Braun Strowman throws Ellsworth uh, in five seconds either. But get what I'm saying? Let's put it this way. Another March Madness uh, kind of tie-in that we talked about earlier there. Let's say the number one seed is taking on the uh, um, the, or let's even put it at like a three seed taking on a fourteen seed, right? It's highly believable that fourteen mm-hmm. seed could give them a run for their money, but you can see the three seed still keep them at a three four possession uh, lead the whole right. game, right? Like so, yeah, mm-hmm. Shelton Benjamin could win. Uh, uh, Seth Rollins could get him down a couple times, could maybe even kick out, but never get a pinfall attempt on them, right? Like there's that, right. that kind that's of where thing, I'm talking. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you were to go with the seating analogy that right. I'll, I'll run with you on, if you know, the, the, the two seed and the 15 seed, the final score of the game typically is two seed wins by 15 to 20 points. Right. And right. the closest the game ever got was six points early in the first half. Right. That's how these wrestling matches should be more so than every time false finish from both guys. There should just be a Seth Rollins is always having the upper hand. Man, doesn't he look strong going into WrestleMania? Like that could be a verbatim thing that Corey Graves could say. I, I, I just I get tired of oh, he lost. No, he fucking couldn't have. We all know that. Right. So fucking stop doing that. Yeah, we Bullshit. all know Shelton Benjamin was not going to win this match tonight. Everybody knew it. Yeah, so just fucking stop it. Let's just right. let's just get in the shit of Seth Rollins even, to celebrate Seth Rollins. Even the kayfabe character of Shelton Benjamin knew he wasn't winning that match. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. All right. So anything else you want to hit on? I think we've about covered it, man. That's everything. It's all. Yeah, all- like I said. Yeah, like I said, my favorite thing of the week is uh, the that AJ Styles Randy Orton promo, and I don't know if necessarily storyline going into uh, WrestleMania they're going to be my favorite thing, but I definitely feel like they could be the ones that steal the show. Very much like uh, the Seth Rollins Randy Orton match from WrestleMania 31, where Seth Rollins tried to do that curb stomp, he kicked him out of the curb stomp into an RKO. You know, those two guys can figure something creative out yes. that's gonna us and they're gonna have a good match going into that too into that spot so yeah that's what i'm looking forward to a lot yeah uh, me too yeah i'm getting excited Uh, we've got a little bit of way we still got what three weeks or so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely so we got some ways to fuck it up because you know that the easiest storyline to tell in the last five years they shit the bed on with ronda charlotte and becky so they still have time guys they still have time to suspend her again injure her again reinstate Vince her again. comes out at yeah Vince comes out and adds fucking uh Alexa Blaze to the goddamn match or Lita you know a Lunder Blaze <laughs> Lunder Blaze I don't fucking know yeah. Yeah. um yeah man I don't know we shall see it's that time of year though where everybody's awaiting uh anxiously what will happen so and it's only good uh, or it's only that much better for the podcast right and for you the listener Indeed. Indeed. And we will be back next week with more Spanish Announce Table.
Fun fact, Shawn Michaels and Mick Foley are the only superstars to both compete and official inside Hell in the Cell. The Spanish announce table.